Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and this video is all about the truth that understanding the astrology of the moons of a couple is key and also that Vedic astrology says far more about this than Western astrology. Understanding the nature of your moon and your partner's moon, plus how they each relate to each other, is key to understanding your relationship. Now, the essence of my readings and teaching over the past 28 years or whatever, is that you do need both Western and Vedic astrology for adequate astrological analysis and guidance. You do need both. But Vedic astrology says far more. Now this video and blog post is all about a couple who actually have their moons only one and a half degrees apart in the same sign. So Western astrology says they are identical and this is wonderful for their relationship. But Vedic astrology actually reveals that their moons are a universe apart. And this so needs to be understood. This man and this woman with their moons only one and a half degrees apart, are actually so different. They couldn't be more different. Now, Western astrology, which uses the tropical zodiac, based on the position of the sun at the day of the vernal equinox, being sun sign based, is all about our psychological self, including, of course, wonderfully and crucially, our Lilith shadow side and our Chiron wounded healer side. It's crucial to be aware of that declaration of Western astrology. But Vedic astrology, which uses the sidereal zodiac based on the position of a fixed star speaker, is orientated to the eternal, the stars, and thus a statement of our fate path, our destiny path, our incarnational life purpose path in this life, and of the unfoldment of that through the course of our life. This post shows that a lack of crossover from Western to Vedic astrology or from Vedic to Western astrology, can actually make nonsense. And in this particular post, I'm focusing on a situation where lack of Vedic astrology means that the couple may not be aware of the nonsense of their Western astrology statement. As I said, both Western and Vedic astrology are crucial, and the two zodiacs are currently 24 degrees apart. You must have both the Western and the Vedic chart for accurate declaration of the crucial relationship factors, including the moons of a couple. But this post shows where the key declaration of a couple's Western relationship chart between their moons actually completely misleads. It totally and utterly misleads about the nature of their relationship. This is a serious issue and utterly needs to be known about and understood. And this post is actually in connection with the creation of our new Love Star Dating website. It's an international website for those on a spiritual pathways who are seeking love. And we created it recently with no members 
unlike the the usual um, astrology, uh, sorry, the unusual date. I'm so sorry. Unlike the usual dating sites, which have a load of bogus members to start with, but we wanted and needed to be genuine, so we started with none. But it's free to join, so if it applies to you on a spiritual pathway and seeking love, join and boost the numbers, and soon there'll be thousands worldwide on a spiritual pathway seeking love. Now, OK, let's look at the Western Astrology Declaration of our test case couple first. Their moons are only one and a half degrees apart, remember. Now, in the Western Tropical Zodiac, the man's moon is at 23 degrees, four minutes of Aries. And the woman's moon is at 24 degrees, 39 minutes of Aries. Their moons obviously only a degree and a half apart. Now this is seen as a close, strong, positive connection within the Western astrology framework. But this is one example of where the Western declaration is totally misleading. Now before I go on to share the Vedic declaration of the astrology of the moons of this couple, let's look in more detail about what Western astrology says, Western astrology this is, using the Western tropical zodiac, what does it say about this couple? It's the typical Western astrology statement is this, the man's moon is conjunct the woman's moon, orb 1 degree 34 minutes. The moon is one of the key personal planets in relationship astrology. A positive combination of personal planets predicts well for intimate unions. This is an ideal combination for a close personal love relationship. When two people's moons are conjunct like this, there is empathy and understanding which is required for intimacy. This man and this woman can relax, knowing that they are compatible on an emotional level. Instinctively, they feel comfortable in each other's company. They know how each other feels. They're willing to consider their loved one's feelings along with their own. They enjoy spending time in each other's company. Intuitively, they understand each other. They both have the same manner of dealing with tensions and misunderstandings. Simply being together comforts them. This is a most rewarding personal relationship. But I have to say, the truth is, the problem is that this Western astrology declaration is actually fundamentally incorrect. Their moons are actually not a conjunction as Vedic astrology reveals using the sidereal zodiac. So here is a brief resume of the Vedic astrology insight wonders. First of all, their moons are actually in completely different signs in the Vedic sidereal zodiac. Secondly, their moons are in completely different nakshatras. The nakshatras are the supremely wonderful lunar signs of Vedic astrology. Thirdly, their moons have the utter vastness of the Gandanta between them. OK, let's go into more detail. As regards the signs the couple's moons fall in, the man's moon is at 29 degrees 56 Pisces, the end of the final sign of the zodiac. But the woman's moon is at 1 degree 29 Aries, the beginning of the first sign of the zodiac. They're in different signs. Secondly, as regard the nakshatras, 
this couple's moon's fall in. The man's moon is in the 27th and final nakshatra, Revati. The woman's moon is in the first nakshatra, Ashwini. Totally different emotional consciousnesses. And thirdly, as I said, their moons have the utter vastness of the Gandanta zone between them. More about the detail of these three vast declarations in a moment. But I must say that the truth is, if you genuinely want to know about your relationship, you have to understand the Vedic Astrology Declaration as well as the Western Astrology Declaration. This particular post focuses more on where the Vedic Astrology Declaration is supremely needed and right. But watch out for other posts of mine which will reveal that Western Astrology Declaration is also absolutely needed too. So now let's look at the interpretation of this couple's moons, which is so infinitely better described by Vedic Astrology. And as you will see, this man and this woman are not at all the identikit described by Western Astrology. And obviously note that we are not just our moon nature. We all have other parts to our psychological self that can be very different, even opposing. And of course, we all have our unconscious and shadow personality too, our destiny and fate dimensions too, our karmas too. So first of all, more detail about the Vedic signs in which this couple's moons fall, the man. Okay, here's a tiny few facts about the man's moon sign, which is Vedic Pisces. The man's moon is at 29 degrees, 56 Pisces. Now the symbol for Pisces is two fish side by side, swimming in opposite directions. At its highest, this person is attuned to the stream of consciousness flowing back and forth between heaven and earth. Pisces' basic nature is mystical, intuitive, <clears throat> inspiring, sympathetic, philosophical, contemplative, wants a romantic or heavenly life, is good at calming people down and making them feel comfortable has unbounded generosity, is wanting to serve especially the underdog. Pisceans are very attracted to concepts of enlightenment and liberation. They are very called to complete the current karma that has been running in their incarnations. But negatively there's complacency. The person feels a victim at the mercy of life rather than in the driver's seat. Positively, this Pisces moon man's positive features are he feels deeply and intuitively, he's spiritual and humanitarian, he's empathetic, nice, unpretentious, loving, idealistic, romantic. But negatively, too porous, self-doubting, subservient, dependent, gullible and unworldly about finances. Now let's do more detail on the Vedic astrology of the woman's moon in Aries. Moon in Vedic Aries. This woman's moon is at 1 degree 29 Aries. At her best, she will be self-assertive, full of initiative, pioneering, courageous, enterprising, ambitious, with enthusiasm for life, but unfavourably adversarial, aggressive, me first, I want it now attitude, taxless, selfish, impatient, uncooperative, jealous, 
may even cheat to get results. The ends justifies the means. Intolerant, arrogant, reckless, leaves tasks undone, seeks overly simplistic solutions. But positively, this moon in Aries woman is spontaneous, fun-loving, decisive and impulsive. And unfavourably, she's unsettled, jumps in recklessly, gullible, poor at finishing things, with bursts of anger. Aries females tend to be masculine and aggressive, yet often seek out more docile men whom they feel they can control. OK, let's move on to looking at the nakshatras, these two moons are in. So the moon of the man is in Revati Nakshatra, the 27th and final um, Nakshatra of the lunar zodiac of Vedic astrology. And um, okay, just to pick out a few facts, there's more in the accompanying blog post. The Devata is Pushan. The power animal is the female elephant, nurturing understanding, immobility. The motivation is moksha or salvation. The Ayurvedic dosha is kapha, the gana is divine. And the caste is shudra or servant, they're service orientated, the quality is soft. So this man with a revity nakshatra moon has a belief in the goodness of humanity. It all depends on their level of consciousness and whether they can find the energy, will and potential for growth. But at the higher levels of consciousness, they will be compassionate and forgiving, devoted to good, often needing to live by water, dedicated to giving nourishment and fertility, empathetic, sweet, sensitive and caring, totally flexible to the point of self-loss, codependent, problems with boundaries and psychic protection, needs quite a lot of seclusion to protect themselves from the harsh realities of life and other people. Revities are meant for worlds greater and more special and beautiful than this world. Visionary beyond the consciousness level of their society, they have tomorrow's skills for today's work. Revities protect the soul in its spiritual journey through this life, towards death and rebirth. And revity is the final phase in a cycle of rebirths. There is a great need for a revity to find their true spiritual path. So that is the man's moon in Nakshatra. Now let's look at the woman's moon in Nakshatra. So different. This woman has her moon in Ashwini Nakshatra, the first Nakshatra of the 27 sign lunar zodiac. And the Devata are the Ashwini Kumaras, the healer twins, the divine physicians. The power animal is stallions streaking across the skies of dawn. The guna is Rajas, Rajas, Rajas. The Ayurvedic dosha is Vata, the gender is male. So Ashwini moons are pioneers, innovators, explorers. Heroic, courageous, restless and impatient with zest for life. Strong desire to be of service. Energetic, magnetic and attractive, quick in speak and actions. Zeal and zest, trailblazers who can perform healing miracles, but who can be inconsiderate and irresponsible. So the key theme is to learn to be the horse tamer. They have a danger of rushing into relationships that can destroy them and which their family will be opposed to and can only be lucky to escape those relationships later on. They're prone to injuries through rushing about, especially the ankle, 
childish and irresponsible. Okay, now let's look up the fourth component that makes nonsense of the Western astrology declarations that I read you of the moons of this couple. Here I offer you a supreme and vast declaration of something that can only be found within Vedic astrology. And that is the crucial need to understand the three Gandanta zones for needed full and accurate astrology and needed full and accurate relationship analysis. If you and your partner have a planet in one of these three crucial to know zones, you must learn about them. Now the three Gandanta zones are at the end of the Vedic water sign and the start of a Vedic fire sign. So they are at the transition points of Pisces Aries, Cancer Leo and Scorpio Sagittarius. Now in practical terms, a person has a planet with Gandanta zone qualities if that planet is in the last two degrees of a water sign or the first two degrees of a fire sign. And the nearer the planet is to the actual zero point between the two signs, the vaster is the Gandanta quality that takes over the planet. Essentially, Gandanta zones are where this world becomes experienced as immaterial by the person. Now that's not to say that this world isn't important. It is. It's crucially important. We incarnate here in this world for special tasks. To burn our negative karmas from 